All right, what's up, guys? Uh, I know it's been a minute since I've done a video. I mean, well, not too long, but it's been a decent while. It's been a minute since I've done a dark and darker video, and once again, you will you will see more dark and darker videos soon. The wipe's coming up, and I'm back to playing dark and darker. I was playing Dungeon Mourn because the test was out. However, I'm not really playing it that much right now because obviously the test is gone. So back to dark and darker. Also, new wipes coming out. However, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is I want to go over a questing guide. Kinda. I want to go over a guide for the quests. So, like I said, new wipes coming up. Which means all the quests are going to be resetting. Which means you got to do all your quests again. And while I'm sure some of the quests will be changed. I don't know how much. Because, I mean, this is just my speculation. I don't actually have any information. It's not like the devs told me anything. Like I said, I don't know how much they'll be changed. I'm assuming they will be. There's no guarantee they will be. But I'm assuming the quest will be changed. However, like I said, remains to be seen. If they are not changed, then this guide will be 100% accurate. And I will, you know, tell you everything. However, if they are changed, you know, I... Maybe we'll make an updated version. Probably won't. Probably be too busy questing myself. But anyways, I want to make a guide going over all the quests for every single vendor. Um, the fastest way to do them. The quests I think you should do first. The ones you can save until later. The best rewards. All that stuff. And I'm just going to go down the line. Uh, I'll go over all the quests first. And then I will tell you the ones I think are the most important. So, for starters, we have the Alchemist quest. Um, the rewards for this quest are good. Well... So the, so the rewards for the quest, after you complete, I believe, the second quest, you get access to crafting Grim Smiles and Fangs of Death. Before the buff to Grim Smiles, this was, like, cool, but it wasn't that good because it only gave you a normal Ring of Courage with luck on it. Give you three strength, you know, like 10 luck or 12 luck or whatever it rolls up to on a Courage Ring. Decent, not that great. However, they buffed Grim Smiles. Now, you get five strength off of these, so it's basically the strength value of a unique, but it only has three rolls. So it's the ro value of a unique for the strength, and the rolls is only to a whatever it is rolls to, to an epic so these are still very very worthwhile and the alchemist quest isn't that actually hard to do um the thing is so the, the most important thing to remember about all these quests that i'm gonna go over is a lot of the quest force you to play different maps for example this one kill goblin mage skeleton mage wisps whisper on ruins goblin mages are uh, goblin caves and skeleton mages can be everywhere but the thing is, whenever you're doing certain quests, like, there are several different quests that require you to kill goblin mages. You don't ever want to be like, okay, I'm going to goblin caves just to kill these five mages. No, you want to go to goblin caves to be doing an escape quest from goblin caves, uh, you know, maybe mining from goblin caves, like mining uh, cobalt, ruby silver, mining or killing other goblins, getting goblin ears. You want to be doing multiple quests in the same area at the same time to maximize your questing efficiency. And I'm going to be honest. If you guys are just playing the game casually and you don't care, this questing guide will not matter to you. These are for, like, the Giga Sweats that are trying to, like, min-max their questing, get their quests done instantly, get uh, get the quest rewards, get access to crafting, and make a ton of money. So, like I was saying, so the first one is just deliver three of each potion. Uh, it doesn't matter what rarity, so the three looted potions. This one you're going to do pretty much passively. Uh, the best way to find them, you can, uh, you can find them in chest, break boxes, break barrels. This is also going to be how you find your leather caps and your campfires for a later quest. But this one right here, super easy. You're going to do this one passively. However, for science, second one, like I said, it's Wisp, Goblin Mages, and Skeleton Mages. This quest isn't super high uh, on the priority list because while it does give you Grim Smiles, like, these are good, and I do recommend getting them. Oh, let's see. While I do recommend getting them, it won't be, like, a life-changing factor, especially if you're, like, a like a um, caster class, right? Because most of the stuff you're going to be crafting early is going to be stuff that you want to use. And if you can't actually use these, like, if you're, like, a, you know, like, a rogue, ranger, fighter, this is really good because Grim's Wilds are rings you could use. But, like I said, if you're, like, a wizard or a warlock, you're not really going to care about these. And the problem with selling them early is people don't have a ton of money, so you can't really sell things for as good, you know, prices. However, you can craft them early and then hold them for later on in the white when people have more money and then sell them for, you know, a ton of money. But the thing is about this quest line is the third quest line, like, there are, like it's it's pretty hard to do. Not hard in the sense of, like, it's not hard, but it's time-consuming because you need 10 moldy bread. The skulls are easy and the mimic teeth are not that hard. But the moldy bread, 10 moldy bread, that's a lot. And you also need moldy bread for another quest, and a much, much more important quest line. And the thing is, the only thing you get for completing this third quest is you get access to, like, the blue potions. You get access to crafting, you get access to buying uh, green healing potions, and I think you can craft the blue, like, healing shield and uh, magic pride. Which is, like, completely, who gives a fuck? I had this forever, and I've never, I think I've, I've never crafted, like, any of these. Rings are great. But the thing is, as long as I keep it where you can craft the rings after finishing the second quest... Do not go to the third one. It's just not worth it. Like I said, there are, like you only get purple rewards here. Just overall not worth it. Way too time consuming and moldy. If you have the if you have the stuff, 
you know, and like in excess and you can spend it, then do it. Cool. You know, it's it's not not going to help you. I mean, maybe like, you know, but you can buy great health pots, which is cool. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be a game changing uh, thing. All right. Armor. Armor is a quest that can be annoying. Most of this stuff is OK. So the thing about armor is its last quest is to kill 15 liches. Now, I don't know if they're going to raise this or I don't know if they're going to lower this. However, you want to get on this very, very fast. Because whenever you're doing your other bossing quests, like kill Ghost or like kill Ghost King, and I assume they'll add one to kill Warlord, but whenever you're doing your other bossing quests, you don't want to be killing bosses for no gain. I mean, you know, no gain, like relatively speaking, not obviously considering the loot and the value of getting like, you know, gold hoard and all that stuff. But you don't want to be killing it for no quest progress. You don't want to kill 30 liches and have zero zero to fifteen because you weren't on the quest yet. So what I recommend, I mean killing skeletons, 75 to 75, this is easy. You're gonna do this pretty fast, like pretty fast, just playing the game normally. However, then on to mining for peace of mind. The rewards for this, whatever, you know, Templar, Plate Pants, no one cares, purple, who gives a fuck. Three gold ingots is nice because there's a 20 gold ingot quest to return in later. However, ruby, silver, and cobalt ingots. There are two ways of going about this. One is you mine it yourself. You go goblin caves, you mine them. It'll take you, give or take, about two hours. I did it on fighter. It probably took me around two and a half hours from starting from scratch, going in uh, white kits to normal goblin caves of mining. If you go HR goblin caves, you could probably do it faster, assuming you don't die. However, it is riskier. But you go to normal goblin caves, you could probably get this done in about two hours. And then you have access to this one. And the thing about this one, this one is like, once again, this isn't like one of the most important quests because it does give you access to gold and plate. And most of this stuff isn't that good. It doesn't sell that well. Um, plate pants, plate chest, golden gauntlets, golden armet. Most of those don't really sell. Boots kind of do. Not really. The only thing that's really going to sell here is the Hound Skull and the, the Yearman Boo. These are the only ones that really sell, so not super important. If you don't want to mine or you just want to wait and buy them when they go on the market later for a certain amount of price, that's respectable. However, the faster you get on this, the better. Also, it gives you legendary riveted and legendary heavy leathers, which are really, really nice to have. So, you know, that's cool. All right, moving on. Fortune Teller has no quest. She'll probably have some later. So, you know, that is what it is. So, the Goblin Merchant, the best way I can describe this quest is like it's cool right like getting it done is nice because you get like a big coin bag and you get a mystical gem if you're a solo player it's gonna be a really easy quest you're gonna finish it super fast however my recommendation for this quest is this is not a quest line you should focus on you should do this passively while you're doing like whenever you're on you know like whenever you're here to do your escapes like where i'm trying to find the uh, quest i think there's um which one is it like this one right here Leathersmith second quest. Thrive in the dungeon 25 times. 25 goblin caves. In the 25 goblin caves runs, you have to survive for this Leathersmith guy. You should finish all of these quests here for the most part. And you should probably have it your finish your mining here too. Like goblin caves is not somewhere, unless you're a solo player, like I said, unless you're a solo player. Goblin caves is not somewhere you want to specifically be going to quest, uh, quest because most of the rewards just aren't that good. There are other quest lines that need to go there. And there's one very, very important one that I will uh, go over in a moment. But there's one, uh, but other than, like, other than this, the rewards aren't that good. So, on the Leathersmith, like I said, just passively do these. The rewards are, like, okay. I mean, it's, like, like Surge Kits, like, Oil Lanterns, who cares? Like, you know, who cares about this? The only war, uh, rewards are, you get a Grim Smile, which could be really good. But, like I said, you can get access to crafting them. And then, for the last one, you get a big coin bag. But most people are already going to have at least one of these just from their ranked rewards. Leathersmith, uh, 15 leather caps. This isn't hard to do. Um, just break barrels, break boxes. You'll find a ton of leather caps that way. You know, loot chests. This is once again another very passive one. I do recommend, however, it is worth it to take these over some money. Like 50 gold sellable or a leather cap to turn into your quest. Take the leather cap. This is going to benefit you way more longer. If you get to this point and you complete this quest, you see I'm almost finally done with it. I got my troll pelt literally last night. But they, they increase the drop rate of troll pelt, so it's easier to get now. If you complete this quest and you get access to crafting the gold and leather stuff, it will make you a ton of money. A ton. And like I said, this one is just survived 25 goblin caves runs. Not really that hard to do. And the main reason I recommend getting to this one is for not this guy. Once again, Surgeon. This is another, just like the Alchemist, except it's not as good. Literally, this quest is pretty much irrelevant. All this quest is going to do in the long run, it's going to save you a tiny bit of money buying bandages. Because it just makes these things cheaper. And it gives you access to green bandages, which are very, very good. I won't deny it. Green bandages are very, very good, but they're also very expensive. 63 for a stack, and that's with the maximum uh, discount. Makes the normal ones cheaper, but for the most part, if you're questing like this and you're like a top player, you're not really going to care about saving an extra 10 gold a stack of bandages. It's not going to change a lot. If you want to do it, you can. 
like I said, this one's just deliver 15 bandages. This is a Goblin Caves quest, which you can do in your 25 runs. And this right here is just 15 Surge Kits, which is kind of a pain because Surge Kits are annoying to find. You're not going to want to turn 15 of them in. But all right, on to probably the most important quest system, uh, the, the quest in the entire game, the Tailor. Also, one of the most annoying quests in the entire game. So, start off with, you have to kill 5 Demon Bats, 10 Mages, 3 Berserkers. Just very easy. Demon Bats are the big Gargoyles in Hell, by the way, not the Death Skulls. So, while this quest line is really annoying and is really time-consuming, specifically for this quest here, sprucing up, because you need 3 Enchanted Dark Fabric, 15 Old Cloth, and then 1 Spider Silk. And this Spider Silk is the bane of a lot of people's existences. I got super lucky, and I got mine off, I killed somebody early on in the wipe that had one, and I got it off of him. And I did find one, but I only found one very recently. So the problem with this quest is, one, the drop rate isn't high at all for Spider Silk. And two, there just aren't a lot of big spiders. There's more now in the bigger Goblin Caves. However, whenever people like whenever people start off, a lot of people are going to be going for the Spider Silk. And the reason for that is because it gives you access to the best craft in the entire game, which is the Golden Cloak. The reason this is the best is because every single character in the game will use this. This is their best cloak for every character. Unless something changes, which I hope it does, because I don't like gold stuff being really OP. But unless something changes, gold cloaks are the best cloak in the entire game for every single class. So if you unlock this, the ability to craft these early, this will literally print you money. This is an infinite money hack. Like, we're playing Grand Theft Auto, you just put in the cheat code, the money just goes into your account. That easy. You get even a decent one. And you like doesn't have to be a good one like this one right here you could sell this one on a fresh white for at least a few thousand gold just because it's two good rolls and it's plus three all it's that simple but if you do get the spider silk um the enchanted dark fabric and the old cloth you can farm off of skeleton mages which you know you're gonna be doing it anyways old cloth is something you need for more than just this quest the main thing is the spider silk because it's gonna be really contested it's gonna be really really hard to get and it's just really rare. The best way to get it is to go high roller goblin caves with a luck pot. And then you have like a 6% chance from getting off spiders. Unless they've increased it. I don't know if they have. But if you get this, you are good. This is a quest that is worth hard grinding for. And I like, I mean like hard grind for this quest. And you will make a ton of money. Assuming nothing changes. Let me just add that in there. And the last one on dying muse. 10 ghost king kills. You see it only says I have 1 out of 10. It's because it was bugged the start of last wipe. You only have to kill 1 ghost king to finish it. I did that then. So I got my one. Also, these quests give like okay money, like 100, 200 gold, 1,000 gold. Like that's decent. But once again, this is another boss quest. You don't want to be killing bosses and not have access to these quests because then they won't count. And with how it is right now, you have a one in three chance to kill the boss. Each boss run, give or take, is going to take about 30, 35 minutes. One in three chance. So roughly speaking, if all things are equal, you'll be killing one bot, like one ghost king, every hour and a half. So these quests are going to take a while, even if you're grinding them. However, like I said, if you do roll the Ghost Kings, you know, like I said, you get really lucky and roll like four in a row. You don't want to kill those four Ghost Kings and not have a count towards your progress. So I do recommend grinding this right here very, very hard. All right, on to the next one. Tavern Master. The most RNG quest in the whole game. And I'm going to be honest. Not finishing this quest won't kill you. But it will make you hate yourself. If you look over here on the right, you see that I have one, two, three, four stash tabs. And that's because... The last quest, Battling the Darkness, you complete it. It gives you an extra stash tab. And you see, like, you look at this, like, oh, that quest doesn't look that hard. It's Berserker, Lich, Dogs, Centaurs, Bats, those are all easy to kill. You're right. However, Friend of the Dark Arts, I'm sure many of you see an item there that you've probably never seen before. And if you have, you probably only see it on people's streams. You never probably never had yourself. It is the Centaur Hoof. It is a purple rarity lootable that can only drop from demon centaurs, and it has like a less than 1% drop chance. And centaurs are only in hell, and at most you're going to kill like two, I think, a run. Because I, I think there's only two, of, I, I can most be two. Maybe there's three, I'm not really sure, but at most two to three. So you have like a 1% drop chance for this item. You know, like, I won't think like one, one two, three percent drop chance, you know, like. I'm not doing the statistics here. But you have a very, very low drop chance for this item every single run. Every 30 minutes. And if you get this, fantastic. You have access to your fourth stash tab. Because all these other quests are incredibly easy. Like, look. This is just kill stuff. This one right here is kind of annoying. Because you need some rare uh, items. Like the rusty swords, the bones, the golden teeth. This one's kind of annoying. But, you know, you'll finish this one. 
Like, the broken skulls, bones, and teeth are all, like, they're not super uncommon. The rusty broken swords are pretty annoying to find, but you'll find them. However, then you have, like, once again, this is just kill quest, kill super easy things, kill elites, survive any dungeon, or uh, this is ruin, ruin, survive five ruins, deliver ten. Now, this is something else. Save your ale for this quest. This is really annoying not to do. It's really annoying to get to the quest and, and then need the ale. That's what I did. I didn't realize I needed it. So I got to this quest and had zero out of ten. So save your ale to finish that quest. This one, once again, literally just kill stuff. Kill stuff. But this one. This is the big one. This also takes this also takes enchanted dark fabric and old cloth. The same thing you need for the clothier quest. Clothier. Uh, the tailor quest. So you're in total, you're going to need 20 dark cloth and four enchanted fabrics. Just keep that in mind. And honestly, I do recommend doing this quest after the tailor. While having that last stash tab is very nice. This is not a quest line. Like, doing all this stuff up here early, like, I would turn all these in. But, like, I would not care about this quest line until you get the centaur hoof. Because other than this last one and these turn-ins, like, yeah, keep your dark fabric and old cloth and, you know, maggots and mimic tongue. But other than, like, this, all this kill stuff, I would really not focus on any of this until you have the centaur hoof. Like, whenever you get the centaur hoof, you can literally finish the rest of this in, like, a day. Like, maybe, like, the collectibles, but or, like, like these, maybe it'll take a bit longer. But for the most part, you get the centaur hoof, you'll finish this in a day. It's it's easy after you get this this is just the hard part and a lot of people you might go the entirety of next wipe and never find the hoof that's just how it is and it might happen if it does that's unlucky but god bless you if you do and i wish you all the best of luck but all right moving on um the collector his last quest just gives you a golden key uh golden keys are not going to be high in value because of the market so kind of doesn't really matter i mean you get some like okay stuff like you know legendary lantern that's cool you know, protection the like, this is Wolf Hunters here, which is cool. I mean, you know, it's like whatever. Once again, this is, uh, you know, you need moldy bread, wolf pelts, and wolf fangs. The moldy bread and the wolf pelts, you're not going to want to turn in because you have to spend them. Is there a Tavern Master quest that requires that? Am I wrong? Uh, no, nah, I think it's just this quest, right? Yeah, it's probably just this quest. Anyway, so, I mean, you can spend it on this to get the Wolf Hunters. However, this is another quest system I would not prioritize. Unless Golden Keys jump in value again, which I don't see them doing because of the market. Like, not really that important. Uh, Legendary Lantern, I mean, maybe you can get lucky and roll this if you really want one. However, like I said, for the most part, this quest, very whatever. This is definitely a quest you just passively do. Don't try to grind this quest. Not really worth it. Getting Wolf Hunters is cool, but it's not. It's, it's whatever. Also, something I didn't mention is for the Leathersmith quest, after you finish this one, this is actually one that's very good to do too. Like, early on, once you unlock this, Whenever you get this, you have access to crafting um, Wolf Hunters, uh, Demon Grips, and Demon Clads. You also have access to crafting Ruby Silver Rawhides, which are really good. These uh, uh, Wolf Hunters are the best pants for much any physical class, for the most part. Uh, Demon Grips and Demon Clads, best for... Also, these are insane, by the way. I just realized that. These are actually insane. Holy crap. But uh, these right here are the best for healers or Warlock. So Cleric, Warlock, best for them. Ruby Silver Rawhides, best for casters other than Warlock. If you don't need healing, these are fantastic. They give seven stats that you all want. And then Tripelt Nor Full Northern, very good for Barbarian. However, the more likely than not, you're going to use the Tripelt Doublet or the Ruby Silver Doublet. These are also very good. And I think you unlock these after completing the second quest, which is this one right here. But once again, this is probably the, this is the most important quest by far. All right, uh, Treasure Quest. See, now this is a very, very important quest line very so the okay so the thing about this quest is for the most part this isn't this doesn't matter if you like grind to the last quest because you see here it takes one of every legendary gem the thing is you can have all four of these legendary gems but it doesn't matter because like you know you could pick these up before you get to this last quest and whenever you get here you just turn them all in boom make your gold chest however i do recommend you know if you see these make sure you save them because getting that gold chest especially with the market being the way it is is the most important thing having the storage space to buy stuff off the market constantly or you know fill ten thousand gold up so you can buy stuff and not have a full like you know a stash tab full it's just the best thing ever because if you don't have these you're gonna craft a bunch of big gold bags and that's gonna be a pain but most of these quests very very easy uh 15 mimics so the thing about mimics this quest right here the 15 mimic quest my best advice for this is there are guaranteed mimic spawns on um i know crypts i know there are guaranteed spawns and crypts i don't know about ruins and goblin caves i'm not sure i don't play them that much well, ruins i play but i don't really loot a ton to know however i know they're in crypts so the easiest way to do this is just go to crypts pull up a map for the map you're on look for the guaranteed spawns run and kill them 
reset, repeat. You can literally load it naked, run and do it, kill all the mimics that are on the map, leave the game, reset, repeat, do it. Uh, Bengals quest, the best I have to say this, is literally just pick up every single bangle and throw it in your inventory, and then whenever you can turn this in, turn it in, sell everything that's left. Not really complicated there. 15 ceremonial daggers, easy, same way, just, you know, fill them up, turn them in, call it a... Oh, actually, I guess for this one, eh, I mean, because you can throw them in one at a time, so I guess it doesn't really matter. You just pick them up, turn them in what you can, if you can't turn it in, sell it, because you already have it. You know, kills three cockatrices, easy, ruins, boom, done. So like I said, this is definitely a quest. Other than these two right here, like I would try to, um, I would try to get the mimic quest done as fast as possible because then you don't have to worry about filling your inventory up with stupid bangles or stupid ceremonial daggers. Turn these in, and then I would just wait for this one. You can do this one literally whenever. Wait till you have all the gems, and then go do it because otherwise you don't have to waste time on ruins. But yeah, getting this gold chest, fantastic. Highly recommend it. Valentine doesn't have any quests yet. However, I assume he will. The same way Santa did. It might be the same as Santa's quests. Um, it's good to do. It's very good to do, especially early on in the white, because it just gives you access to free legendary items. Um, well, free, you know, but you can buy legendary items and roll them a free roll, like you know, roll legendary item. You don't have to find it. You don't have to the boss to kill it or uh, boss to find it. Kill troll, kill cyclops, lich, warlord, ghost king, or loot hell chests. You know, you just have access to it. Buy it with uh, candy canes or heart candy or whatever it is um some people aren't going to want to do it because it's going to take 100 gingerbread or 100 whatever it is you know assuming it's the same thing instead of rolling it on names at goblin merchant however if you're overall trying to be more consistent it's definitely worth it to do other than that you know this is very much just if you think it's worth it or not weaponsmith this is another quest this is another quest that is fantastic to do and i highly recommend it because it gives you access to crafting all these weapons Specifically, the silver weapons are very, very strong, the divine weapons, and then you have, obviously, the really good weapons like Lightbringer, Faust of Honor, Demon's Glaze, Spear of Rots, yada yada. Also, this quest is very easy to do. Mm, excuse me. Very easy to do this quest. The only hard part is this one. It is mining the gold. That is the only hard part to do. Turning into 15 rare weapons, the only... So, the thing is, if you get these in, you actually get, like, free purple weapons super early. Really, really easy. The bow's the only one that's really good. Others kind of dog. But the best advice I can give for 15 rare weapons is throwing knives and Francisca's count. So if you find like a stack of two throwing knives or two Francisca's on a bat, split the stack and they can count for, and each one will count for a different one. Other than that, just pick up the smallest weapons you can to turn these in. You can either mine the gold or buy it. I highly recommend mining it. The heck? For Arctic, just invite, like, Arctic, stop inviting me while I'm doing a video. Um... But other than that, like I said, mining it, way cheaper. Gold will be probably pretty damn expensive at the start of the wipe. Always is. I think whenever I mined on mine and turned it in, it was about a 10,000 gold value. So, you know, you're not going to want to turn in. You're not going to want to buy 10,000 gold to complete the quest. And the last one, kill 50 players. Super easy. You're going to do it. However, this gives you good weapons. Crossbow, heater shield, which are really nice. Short sword, decent. That's why. Pretty dog. But, you know, other than that. Whenever you complete it, you get access to crafting all of these weapons that are very, very good, and you're definitely going to want. Then Woodsman, the last quest for the Woodsman. Um, I'm not actually sure. What does he even give you? He just gives you better shops, I guess, which are pretty irrelevant. Honestly, if you're not a ranger, this quest doesn't really matter to you. The only thing he gives you that's worthwhile is he gives you a troll pelt so you can craft like a tri pelt or something or a big gold bag. Very irrelevant quest. Oh, if you're not a ranger, doing it isn't really going to help you. Because it used to be, you did it, you could buy Franciscus with throwing knives and stuff at the max rank. Now you can do it at every rank, so who cares? So overall, do it if you want. Doesn't really matter. Don't really care. So, like I was saying before, the most important quest to do, Taylor. Number one, this is the most important quest. I recommend getting this done, the first part done. And then you start on this part. At the same time, as you can do things like this, you know, Goblin Mage here, you can do your mining quest, you can do all the Goblin Merchant quests, you can do the 20, this this is something else, the 25 survives here, the 25, surviving the Goblin Caves 25 times, you want to be on this quest here, at the same time you are trying to do this quest right here, because you're going to have to be in the Goblin Caves a bunch anyways, and at the same time, you can help, you could even go try to do the troll, or you can do any other quest that requires you to be there. 
but you always want to try to be doing multiple quests at the same time. Unless you're in a situation, like I said, where you're just trying to farm out one specific quest, like, you know, like, let's say you get Leathersmith, you get Leathersmith 2 done, and you just really want gold and leather stuff. Farm troll, get that troll pelt, get your wolf pelts, call it a day. Because the gold and leather stuff can make you a ton of money, too. It's not going to make you gold and cloak money, but it can make you a lot of money. So, like I said, highly recommend doing the quest. Tailor is probably the most important. If I had to pick most important quest, I would probably say Tailor, Weaponsmith, Leathersmith. And then mm, either Alchemist or Treasure. I don't think the rest, the rest of these are pretty much irrelevant. Like, Armor, pretty irrelevant. Tavern Master, like, this is important in the sense of it's really nice to have other stash space. But you can get around not having stash space. You can use other characters. You can, you know... Do whatever you want. Having This is just convenient. This isn't really give you anything. It's just convenient. This gives you Grim Smiles. This right here. All these like, golden padded tunic. Because the best part about the um, Taylor quest is, yeah, the golden cloak is the best thing. And everybody buys this. But all four of these other pieces also sell incredibly well. Golden robes sell to um, clerics, wizards, warlocks. Golden leaf hoods, wizards, warlocks. Scarf, rangers, rogues. Padded tunics. Fighters, rangers, rogues, bards, everybody, like everybody. Everybody can, like people can use all of these. And then not even just including that, tripelt doublet, ruby silver doublet. You can make so much money from the tailor. Leathersmith is good, yes. However, people aren't always going to use heavy leather, golden heavy leather legs, not that great. Golden gloves and golden boots, pretty good. But the golden boots, most classes aren't going to wear. Golden gloves, fantastic. Everybody can wear. And then you have the golden chosses, which, uh, yeah, they're good for casters. But, you know, they need to be really good. And, like, they can make up those rolls. And then Demon Clads are going to take the spot for um, Clerics and Warlocks. So it doesn't really matter there. You're pretty much only going for Wizards. And Wizards are usually pretty broke. Weaponsmith, very important because you can craft the really good weapons. This is more of a selfish quest line. Yeah, you can make money off of this. However, this is just going to give you access to good weapons. You're a Fighter player. Boom. Fashions of Honor. Roger, Bard player. Boom. Demon's Glee. Um, Ranger player. Boom. Divine Bow. Centaur's Madness. Wizard player, boohoo. Pick a better class. Cleric player, um, Divine Rod, right there. Bard player, Bone Shaper. This has pretty much something for everything that isn't wizard. I mean, you can make, you know, the Mana Sphere or the Vision Crystal, I guess, but who cares? But like I said, also, this, I mean, you know, I mean, you can, I think you, you can craft, I think you can craft with these all the time, but that's, that's beside the point. So, with that being said, um, that pretty much sums it up for the questing guide. Uh, I just kind of want to go over all the quests, tell you the ones I think are most important, which you should do, which you shouldn't do. You know, other than that, have fun. Like I said, this quest, this guide is mostly for people that are just going to be like giga sweats, like trying to grind out quests really fast the same way I'm going to be. But if you're like, if that's not you, then just have fun. Quest at your own pace. Enjoy it. I mean, I'm assuming we're probably, we're probably going to have new quests. We're probably going to have more quests, updated some of the old quests. Who knows? So maybe this could be a completely useless guide. I don't know. But made it anyways. So thank you guys for watching, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, other than that, I'll probably be making a new guide just in general for things I should do for the new wipe other than questing. So be looking forward to that, potentially, maybe. Who knows? All right. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.